What if the most complex high-stakes war ever fought wasn't on some distant battlefield, but was being waged right now inside your own body? For millions of people, this isn't a hypothetical scenario. It's the daily reality of living with an autoimmune condition. It's a civil war where your body's greatest protector, your immune system, gets a little confused and starts attacking the very tissues it's supposed to defend. The conventional approach has often been to carpet bomb the entire system, broad immunosuppressants. They can work, but they're a bit like trying to stop a single noisy person at a concert by shutting off the power to the entire stadium. Effective? Sure. But you're left in the dark, vulnerable. But what if there was a smarter way, a more elegant solution? What if you could find the conductor of that chaotic orchestra, and instead of firing them, you could just hand them back the sheet music? That's where our journey begins today, into the world of a fascinating peptide called thymosin alpha-1, or T-alpha-1, for simplicity's sake. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, and today we are diving deep into one of the most intelligent molecules in the arsenal of immune modulation. And right up front, this is not meant to treat, diagnose, cure, and is purely for entertainment. Research peptides are not for human or veterinary use. Use extreme caution when entering the gray market and arm yourself with knowledge. Now to truly grasp what thymosin alpha-1 does, we first need to appreciate the masterpiece it works with, a healthy immune system. Think of it as a world-class orchestra. You have your different sections, the strings, the brass, the percussion. These are your immune cells. The neutrophils are the percussion section, loud, fast, first responders. The lymphocytes are the strings, holding the memory of past performances, the melody of immunity. And the conductor? The conductor ensures every single instrument works in perfect, sublime harmony. This beautiful state of balance has a name, immune homeostasis. It's this homeostasis that allows your body to unleash a thunderous symphony against a virus, and then, just as importantly, fade to a gentle quiet Once the threat is gone, the war is over, and peace is restored. In autoimmune conditions, the conductor has not only lost the score, they've thrown it into a bonfire and started screaming directions in a language no one understands. The system loses its ability to distinguish between a foreign invader and, say, your own thyroid gland or the cartilage in your joints. This is the essence of autoimmunity, its friendly fire. And this friendly fire results in a relentless smoldering firestorm called chronic inflammation. The orchestra is just playing a constant deafening blast of noise day in and day out. And the theater itself, your body, is starting to crumble. So what went wrong? Research, particularly a fascinating paper in Frontiers in Immunology from 2020, suggests that in many of these conditions, the body's own natural supply of crucial regulatory molecules, including our star player T-alpha-1, has dwindled. The conductor's advisors have all gone on vacation, leaving chaos in their wake. This brings us to the hero of our story, thymosin alpha-1 isn't some strange foreign substance. It's a bio-identical copy of a peptide your body is supposed to be making. Its entire job description is to be that wise, experienced conductor stepping in to restore order to the immune orchestra. So what exactly is it? T-alpha-1 is a 28 amino acid peptide that was first discovered in the thymus gland. Now, the thymus is the master gland of your immune system. Think of it as the Juilliard of T-cells. This is where your most important immune soldiers, the T-cells, go to mature and learn their trade. T-alpha-1 acts as a primary signaling molecule, a messenger that literally educates these T-cells and other immune players. It teaches them the difference between friend and foe. It tells them when to be aggressive and when to stand down. Here's the catch. As we age, 
our thymus gland naturally shrinks and becomes less active. This process is called thymic involution. And as it shrinks, our natural production of T-alpha-1 plummets. This decline is one of the key reasons our immune function can get a bit wonky as we get older. The idea behind using T-alpha-1 as a therapy is brilliantly simple. If the body's supply of this crucial messenger has run low, let's replenish it. Let's give the body back its own tool for self-regulation. Now, this is where it gets really clever. And what separates T-alpha-1 from those carpet bomb immunosuppressants, it has what we call a context-dependent action. It's a smart tuner, not a sledgehammer. Let's say your immune system is underactive. Maybe you're dealing with a stubborn, chronic viral infection. In this context, T-alpha-1 can step on the gas. It enhances the function of your T-cells and your natural killer cells, telling them to get to work and clear out the invader more effectively. But now let's take the opposite scenario, an overactive immune system, as we see in autoimmunity. Here, T-alpha-1 doesn't step on the gas. It gently applies the brakes. It promotes the function of a special type of T-cell called regulatory T-cells, or TREGS for short. You can think of TREGS as the immune system's diplomatic core, or its peacekeepers. Their job is to say, all right, everyone, calm down, stand down. This is our own tissue. We are not at war here. T-alpha-1 helps to bolster this peacekeeping force, calming the inflammatory storm and restoring that beautiful immune homeostasis. This dual action, this immunomodulatory effect, is its superpower. It doesn't just force the system's thermostat up or down. It reads the room and adjusts the thermostat to the perfect balance temperature. This intelligent guidance, as referenced in a 2017 paper from Clinical and Experimental Immunology, is what makes it such a promising area of research. So with this incredible mechanism of action, where has the scientific community been looking to apply T-alpha-1? The research spans decades and covers a wide range of conditions that all share a common root, a dysregulated immune system. Let's start with rheumatoid arthritis, or RA. In RA, the immune system decides that the lining of your joints looks suspiciously like a foreign invader and launches a full-scale assault. This causes debilitating pain, swelling, and eventually joint destruction. The research here is fascinating. Studies like one published in the Journal of Clinical Immunology in 2015 have shown that T-alpha-1 can help dial down the production of those angry pro-inflammatory messengers, the cytokines with names like TNF-alpha and IL-6. At the same time, it boosts those TREG peacekeeper cells. So the key benefit being explored isn't just masking the pain. It's about fundamentally shifting the underlying autoimmune conversation from one of attack and destroy to one of ceasefire and repair. Next up, let's talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is the most common cause of an underactive thyroid or hypothyroidism in the United States, and it's a textbook case of organ-specific autoimmunity. In Hashimoto's, there's often a critical imbalance between different factions of your T cells, specifically the Th1 and Th2 cells. This imbalance leads to a concentrated attack on the thyroid gland. Research including a notable study in the Endocrine Journal from 2013, has shown that T-alpha-1 can help modulate this crucial Th1-Th2 balance. By restoring this balance, the theory is that T-alpha-1 can help persuade the immune system to call off the attack, potentially protecting the delicate thyroid tissue from further damage. It's about convincing the security guards to stop roughing up the owner of the building. And what about one of the most enigmatic conditions out there, myalgic encephalomyelitis, more commonly known as chronic fatigue syndrome, or MECFS. For many people with MECFS, the immune system is a paradox. On one hand, it seems weakened, unable to keep old viruses like Epstein-Barr in a dormant state. On the other hand, there's evidence of constant low-grade systemic inflammation. 
The system is simultaneously exhausted and overstimulated. Given what we know about thymosin alpha-1's dual action capabilities, you can see why researchers are so interested. Its ability to both enhance antiviral defenses and calm down inflammatory signaling makes it a uniquely suited candidate for investigation. A study in PLOS-1 from 2018 highlighted this potential for addressing the complex immune mess seen in MECFS. Okay, the science is compelling, but let's get practical. The, for anyone looking into this for research purposes, what are the key considerations? Let's talk about safety and what research protocols might look like. First, let's look at safety. This is probably one of the most appealing aspects of T-alpha-1 because it's a bioidentical substance that your body recognizes. It is generally found to be extremely well tolerated in clinical studies. The vast majority of clinical data shows a remarkable lack of significant side effects. The most commonly reported issue is something you might see with any injection, minor temporary redness or a bit of irritation at the injection site. That's usually it. This excellent safety profile is what makes it such a point of interest for the long-term management of chronic conditions, often being studied in conjunction with other treatments. So what about dosing? A T-alpha-1 protocol is not and should not be a one-size-fits-all approach. The appropriate dosage and frequency are determined in a clinical or research setting by a qualified healthcare provider or researcher. They'll base it on the specific condition being studied, lab markers, and the overall clinical picture. Typically, administration involves small subcutaneous injections, which are given just under the skin. These are often administered several times a week, but again, the exact protocol is highly individualized. For example, for general immune support wellness, a typical regimen is 1.6 milligrams administered once or twice per week in a research setting. On the other hand, for acute viral infections, higher doses may be used, such as 1.5 milligrams daily for five to 10 days, or 1.6 milligrams twice daily for several days, depending on the severity of the infection being researched. These are just two examples of the many protocols for T-alpha-1. So to bring it all together, for those exploring the complex world of autoimmune or chronic inflammatory conditions, T-alpha-1 represents a truly sophisticated and targeted avenue of research. It's a paradigm shift. It's a move away from the old model of just suppressing symptoms and toward the far more elegant goal of addressing the root cause, the underlying immune dysregulation. By acting as that master regulator, that wise conductor, T-alpha-1 offers a way to restore the immune system's own innate intelligence, gently guiding it back toward a state of balance, health, and harmony. If you found this deep dive helpful and want to continue exploring the cutting edge of health science, hit that like button, and more importantly, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our future videos. And for even more insights delivered straight to your inbox, be sure to sign up for the newsletter. The link, as always, is waiting for you in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. To summarize, we began by discussing the immune system as an orchestra. The neutrophils are the fast-acting percussion, reacting instantly to threats. Lymphocytes are the string section, holding the memory of past encounters. In autoimmunity, this beautiful symphony collapses into pure noise. This uncontrolled noise manifests as chronic damaging inflammation. T-alpha-1 is composed of a specific sequence of 28 amino acids. This gland is the critical training ground for your T-cells. The key difference is the loss of self-tolerance in the autoimmune state. T-alpha-1 modulates the complex conversation between these different immune cells. In an underactive state, T-alpha-1 can boost the cytotoxic activity of NK cells. This peptide works by binding to specific receptors on immune cells to initiate a signaling cascade. The target of the autoimmune attack determines the name of the disease. In RA, the synovium becomes a battleground of inflammation. These molecules are powerful messengers that scream attack and inflame. Hashimoto's is diagnosed by the presence of specific antibodies against the thyroid. 
restoring this Th1-Th2 equilibrium is a primary goal of immunomodulatory therapy. Chronic fatigue syndrome is characterized by a profound post-exertional malaise that is debilitating. Research into this peptide is not new. It has a long and robust history. Patients are often taught by their healthcare provider how to administer the injections at home for convenience. The subcutaneous route allows for slow and steady absorption of the peptide. Purity is paramount. Even small amounts of contaminants can cause adverse reactions. The peptide is typically supplied as a lyophilized powder that is reconstituted with bacteriostatic water before use. Proper storage, usually refrigeration, is crucial for maintaining the peptide's stability and potency. The ultimate goal is to move the body from a state of internal war to a state of internal peace. Because T-alpha-1 is bioidentical, the body's machinery knows exactly how to use it. This process of thymic involution is a natural part of aging, but it has consequences for immune resilience. It helps reestablish the negative feedback loops that are essential for immune control. It's about restoring the conductor's control over the magnificent orchestra of the immune system. Until next time, keep researching.